Crocodilians? There are more than two dozen species of crocodilians alive today, including true crocodiles, alligators, caimans, and gharials. These extant crocodilians share a common ancestor that lived alongside the dinosaurs in the late Cretaceous, about 80 million years ago. While they may look unchanged after nearly 80 million years, today's crocodilians are a far cry from their distant ancestors, which first appeared in the late Triassic, around 235 million years ago. These extinct crocodilian relatives were considerably more diverse than their modern descendants. Some, like Letargosuchus, were built like whippets and pursued small prey on land much like wolves, while others, such as Sarcosuchus, grew to colossal lengths of up to 12 meters, almost 40 feet, and snatched elephant-sized dinosaurs from riverbanks. Today's crocodilians may look prehistoric, but they've come a long way since their ancestors' origins in the late Triassic and may continue to diversify as climate change forces them to adapt. Horseshoe crabs. Despite their name, they're not actually crabs and share more similarities with spiders, ticks, and scorpions than their crustacean namesakes. Their ancestors first appeared in the late Ordovician, around 445 million years ago, though the modern group, Lemulidae, didn't get started until the early Triassic, around 250 million years ago. That makes today's horseshoe crabs older than dinosaurs. For the best part of 250 million years, horseshoe crabs have been in a state of morphological stasis, displaying little anatomical change. If you compared a fossilized specimen with a living one, you'd assume it was the same animal. Their lifestyles are unchanged too. Just like their ancestors, today's horseshoe crabs can be found in silty seabeds hunting small worms and mollusks. These creatures have dodged several mass extinctions, including the asteroid-induced destruction that wiped out the dinosaurs. It's thought that their tolerance to extreme conditions, such as low oxygen levels, is what has made them resilient to extinction. Cedarwood wasps. This diminutive one centimeter long wasp is the only remaining species from a family of wasps that, during the Middle Jurassic, about 165 million years ago, boasted nearly 50 species. Today's cedar wood wasps, Syntexus libocedrii, are endemic to the mountains of Central California, USA, and British Columbia, Canada. But their ancestors were found across Eurasia. Their life cycle is inextricably linked with wildfires, and sightings are often made by firefighters. A study on cedarwood wasps found that they're capable of producing large populations post-wildfire, big enough to wreak significant economic damage on stocks of cedarwood. Tuatara, the Sphenodontids, a once highly diverse family of reptiles now represented by one species, Sphenodon punctatus, or Tuatara. Tuataras closely resemble lizards, sharing similarly scaly skin, splayed limbs and clawed hands, dark feet, but they're not directly related. Instead, they share a common ancestor that lived about 250 million years ago, just after a devastating extinction event known as the Great Dying. Today, they are found on several small, uninhabited islands that surround New Zealand's North Island. They share these islands with burrowing seabirds and sometimes use these birds' burrows for shelter. Like some lizards, tuataras have a third eye, known as a parietal eye, on top of their heads. In adults, this eye is covered by opaque scales, but it can be seen in hatchlings. It's likely tuataras use their third eye to regulate their circadian rhythms and aid thermoregulation. Platypus. It was Charles Darwin who coined the term living fossil when he discussed the semi-aquatic egg-laying mammal platypus in his famous work on the origin of species. Like its original discoverers in the late 1700s, Darwin was flummoxed by this bizarre creature and described it as being so different from other Australian mammals that two distinct creators must have been at work. Unlike other mammals, platypuses lay eggs. They also have duck-like bills and on the hind legs of males, venomous spurs. Their bills are packed with thousands of electroreceptors that they use to detect movement in their murky habitats. They also use their bills to sift through muddy river bottoms, hoovering up shrimps, worms, and crayfish. Adult platypuses are toothless, but babies are born with small teeth that are later reabsorbed into their bills. These baby teeth have helped paleontologists trace their evolutionary lineage back through time. Along with their closest living relatives, echidnas, platypuses are the last survivors of an early group of mammals known as the monotremes. 
This group branched away from its mammalian cousins, the marsupials, kangaroos, koalas, and wombats, and the placentals, whales, elephants, and humans, at some point in the middle Jurassic, about 170 million years ago. Lungfish, slender and worm-like, with limb-like fins and gummy smiles, these fish belong to an ancient group that appeared in the early Devonian, over 410 million years ago. This is a period marked by the emergence of two major types of bony fish, the ray-finned fish and the lobe-finned fish. Like other lobe-finned fish, lungfish have appendages that resemble limbs, as well as lungs that allow them to breathe air and survive periods of drought. While ancient and largely unchanged after hundreds of millions of years, lungfish are far from primitive. Their lungs are divided into many smaller air sacs, maximizing the surface area available for gas exchange. Most modern lungfish have two lungs, with the exception of the Australian lungfish, which has just one. Today, there are six known species of lungfish living across Africa, South America, and Australia. Unlike their ancestors, modern lungfishes are confined to freshwater environments. In the Devonian period, lungfish were found all over the world and lived alongside many of their close, lobe-finned cousins, including the tetrapods that would later go on to conquer the land and diversify into amphibians, reptiles, dinosaurs, birds, and mammals. Horsetails. It's not just animals that evolve, diversify, and ultimately face decline or extinction. Of the roughly 380,000 species of plants known today, only a few can claim to have seen the rise and fall of the dinosaurs. Horsetail is one of these ancient plants. Its modern form, which looks similar to bamboo with its tall, hollow stems and horizontal bands, emerged around 185 million years ago and 55 million years before the first flowering plants. These early Jurassic-aged horsetails form dense forest understories, providing shelter and food for many species of dinosaurs. Analyses of the scratch marks on hadrosaurs' teeth show that hard plants like horsetails made up a large part of their diet. As incredibly adaptable plants, impervious to many common diseases and pests, they spread rapidly and quickly form dense carpets that crowd out other plants. It's no wonder they've survived so long. Quelacanth? For close to 100 years, these elusive prehistoric-looking fish were known only from fossils and were thought to have become extinct at the same time as the dinosaurs 66 million years ago. In 1938, while perusing fishermen's catches at a local market in Eastern Cape, South Africa, museum curator Marjorie Courtney Latimer discovered a freshly caught coolacanth, resurrecting a group scientists had long thought was lost to time. Today, there are only two known species of coolacanth, but from their origins in the early Devonian, 409 million years ago, to now, more than 100 fossil species have been described. Like other animals often labeled as living fossils, Kilocanths actually exhibited quite a lot of diversity in their prime. These evolutionary heydays fell in the Mesozoic era, 252 to 66 million years ago, when huge varieties like the five meters long Mausonia roamed the freshwater rivers and brackish estuaries of South America, North America, and Africa. Both species of coelacanth known today are confined to the deep waters of the West Indian Ocean, where they live in caves and only emerge at night to hunt smaller fish. It's thought this adaptation to relatively stable, deep water environments is what ultimately saved coelacanths from obliteration 66 million years ago. As well as dodging the extinction that claimed the lives of the dinosaurs, coelacanths also survived the infamous Great Dying, an event that wiped out approximately 90% of species on Earth. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you liked. Thanks for watching this far. See you next time.